What does valid say mean to you? Whatever it is that you're giving your attention to at the moment, lack, loss, limitation, illness, sickness, disease, wisdom, wellness, wealth, whatever that thing that you're giving your attention to at the moment is your valid say. And you're about expressing at that moment your valid say. Would you agree? As you're impressed, you express. And you're talking to yourself, impressing yourself all the time, suggesting to yourself all the time. If he says this to me, I'll say that to him. (laughs) And they go through life that way, unaware that they're actually creating the world that they're walking in. But they, but they, well, yeah, they all got that list. I I had one of them. I'm sure you did, too. (laughs) I did. (laughs) But you got to get rid of that list. You can't blame somebody else for what you're thinking. How can you blame somebody else for what you're thinking when you're the one choosing? It works if you work it. You have to play it the way it plays. This is a blame. This is a drama. This is a play. And as you think you are, that's the play. That's what you're doing. That's what you're being. That's what you're having as you think you are. If you want to change it, Do so, and do so quickly. Don't put it off, because if you put it off, that's how being lost forever happens, isn't it? It is, it is. And speaking of that, you made mention of a list. You know, the thing is, that blame list that we all have, sometimes we're tempted to bring it back out, and we have to be mindful that when you bring your list out, you're giving your power away to whatever it is that you're claiming or blaming at the moment. Would you agree? That's it. That's it. That I could draw faster than a gunslayer. <laughs> and I'm sure at times it hurt people. That's the whole idea. Is that acting rather than reacting. That's the difference that makes the difference in your world of experiencing, doesn't it? It does. And I was thinking about the often the phrases and the words that were uh, attributed to Jesus. And what he was giving you was not religion, but he was giving you the process of how mind works. Would you agree? That that is absolutely correct. That is, that's it. And he gave you a way, if you find it's not working right, to change it. And all you have to do to change it just change your mind. That seems pretty simple to me. I mean, if I was leaving my child at a very important message that he couldn't miss it, as you think you are. I mean, you can't get around that. I, 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 you, there's no way around that, is there? There's no way around it. <laughs> well, well, then if you feel stuck, you stuck yourself. <laughs> because... He tells you, they themselves are makers of themselves, and that right there, what we just said, is actually how you make yourself. You're either promoting yourself or denying yourself. That's it. All you have to do is just change your preference. Wouldn't you say? Absolutely. So if you're at a place, let's say a fear, what you're doing is empowering your fear with your predominant thoughts of the moment. And if you want to change that fear, you have to change the channel. And sometimes what you can do about fear is whatever the image you have in your mind about fear, turn it into a funny situation. See that situation played out, but add humor to it. What's going to happen is fear is going to loses power. If you start distorting the thing that you're fearing, that fear will lose its power over you. Would you agree? That's it. That's it. I do agree. Look, what you're giving your attention to is the only power it has. That's the only power fear has to work with is the power you give it by reacting. You're told Be the actor. Choose what you're going to say 
and do and be. Just choose it and stay with what you've chosen. There's going to be mishaps, there's going to be mistakes and all of that, but stay with it because that was determined by God that you should work in that way. And God's ways are not man's ways. So if you're talking about how you feel at the moment and you don't like it, that's you. You're the one picking the route. But if you change to God's way, then he'll choose the route. Thinking feelingly is what your world is made up of. What are you thinking feelingly about? Right? Absolutely. And what I want to challenge you to do is practice it when things are calm. And what I mean by that, say that you're thinking a thought about something that's not pleasant. In that moment that you've given your attention to that unpleasant thought, change it. Think about something that is pleasant and play with it. And then go back to the thought that was unpleasant and then go back to the thought that was pleasant. If you begin practicing, this exercise, what you're going to find is that you have more control when fear thoughts come. You'll be able to, as Mr. Lindell said earlier, change the channel. Because this is what it's about. You can continue to stay on the channel of fear and Fright Night and Vincent Price and all the boogeymans and all the images of monsters, or you can change the channel to something more pleasant, to a Hallmark channel. Would you agree? Absolutely. You know, if you don't challenge yourself, how are you going to be challenged? How are you going to change your mind if you don't challenge yourself? It's investing in yourself that pays you the biggest dividends. Believe me, once you find it, and you're standing right at the portal, all you have to do is step through. And you will do so eventually, but why wait? Everything you want is right there where you are, because God is right there where you are. Jesus is right there where you are. Didn't he tell you, I and my Father are one, even as you and I are one? And how are you called? One by one. Not with an organization. One by one. Because it's you making up your mind to think what you want to think, when you want to think it, and that's your world of experiencing. Rather you believe it or not, it is your world of experiencing. And that's the difference that makes the difference. Choose or you're chosen for, wouldn't you say? Absolutely. And I like that you use the term investing in oneself or self-investment. The things that we're talking about is truly an investment in yourself. And when you begin practicing the things that we're talking about through these talks. You're going to be successful. But many of us hear talk after talk after talk, and we say, man, that was a great talk. But we never apply what it is that we heard. Would you agree? Look, look when people call and they say they want more, what are you going to do with the more that you haven't done with what you already know? You hear what I mean? I do. They want more and more and more, but they haven't even taken the initial step. And that's what we're giving them, is the initial step. If you don't take that, then all the rest of it will just only add to your confusion. And and first of all, it's not about being worthy. You're told right off in Scripture, it ain't none worthy. So there's not one worthy. Not one is worthy. So, I mean, get over it. The idea is that you're to hear, experience, and then share it. And that, that's what it's about. And you will hear it. And, and actually, you will even share it. Maybe in a different way than, than we're sharing it, but you will share it. Because you won't, you, you won't be able to resist sharing it. Because you see people suffering, and you know that you know how they can change their position by a mere shift in their thinking, feelingly, change your mind, change your world. We've said that how many times? 
<laughs> Not enough. <laughs> Not enough. Thank you, thank you. That's what they, because people tell me, well, we, you, you repeat an awful lot of stuff over. That's because I know it's important for you to know it, to feel it. I know you know about it. I mean, I knew about it for years, but it, it wasn't doing me any good knowing about it. It's when you test self. I am that. Your dream, your mission, your goal. I am that. Regardless of the look of that the senses take in, regardless of anything on the without, I am that. Because that's how everything got started. Imagining creates the real in this drama man. Neville told us that over and over and over. And I said, I can't see how that would be. But when you do see, then you know how it would be. And you'll know much, much more. If you'll feel after it, you'll find it. Wouldn't you say? Absolutely. You know, and staying along the theme of fear not, Mr. Linda will often say, and this is truly the key to overcoming fear, do a thing and you shall have the power. If you do the thing that you fear, the death of fear is certain. I think that that was um, Mark Twain. But you have to step out on the fear. Fear is ego trying to keep you in your comfort zone. Would you agree? Actually, it's just really a letting go. There really isn't any fight to it. It's just letting go of the nonsense. I mean, if you've declared it nonsense, let it go. And that's what you're to do. You're to declare what you're talking about yourself, in yourself, for yourself. You're investing in yourself, but investing what? What are you thinking about? What, what is it that really upset you? Is that what you allow to take up conversations with yourself? That, that is exactly the opposite of think on things that are lovely and of good report. So why me? Why this? Why now? That's why. That's exactly why. What you think about, you experience. And if you're not happy with it, well, then you're not thinking properly. But you can. You see, how can you be, how can you be blamed for doing it wrong? You couldn't do it right. You can only be blamed for doing it wrong if you could do it right. And you can do it. He told you to do it. God told you to do it. Isn't that enough for you? Isn't it? <laughs> it should be. And I'd like to go, he said, how can you be blamed for doing it wrong? unless there was a potential in you to do it right. And Jesus would often say to those around him, because you say that you're not sick, then of course that you need no physician, but it's those who are aware that they need a physician that help is found. And that's the thing. When you understand that, listen, I'm operating in these principles, and it's me who's creating this world of illusion. And if I want to change it, I need simply to change my thoughts and change my world. Would you agree? Absolutely. Absolutely. They don't don't have faith in their own say. And it was given to them a valid say. All you have to do is test it. Test me now herewith and see if I will not open up the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing. You don't even have room to receive it all. Wow. Yeah, that's right. Wow is right. (laughs) See, that's the whole thing. You're in charge. Take charge. In other words, be the actor. No more just the reactor. Because the reactor, that's the walking dead. They're not choosing their world. They're just accepting it as it is. And that's okay. If it's okay with you, fine. If you're meeting all your needs, fine. But if you're not, again, we'll say it again, change your mind, change your world. Right? (laughs) Absolutely. Absolutely. And as you will often say, the first does the latter. That's right. That's right. He told you right there. The first does the second. That's it. Go from there. How, how How can you not trust what God has offered you and accept 
everything he doesn't. See, it's only one power. One. Not many. One. Everything is, is, is runs off of that, but there's still only one power. Attitude, awareness, and imaginational control. That's all you really need to know if you'll focus on it. And, and, and like when people come to private interviews, you know, they're saying, well, yeah, you said that before. Well, yeah, and that's why I'm saying it again, because I know how important it is for you to focus on your own attitudes. Because that's your life on this planet Earth. And it has been told you so, not only by God, but everybody down through the ages, all the wise men down through the ages have said that man's life is his attitude. So if you just start right there and get that straight, there'd be no need to even call us for anything, would there? I want to say, listen, you guys hear us from week to week and so forth. This is not Mr. Lindell. This is not DiCarlo. What we're giving you is scripture. And what we've done is taken what's been given to us and we communicate it to you. That's why our message agrees with so many of you. Understand, it's not us giving our message, but it's us giving you your message by way of scripture. These principles, if you use them, they work, and they must work by virtue of divine decree, not Lindo, not DiCarlo. The scripture. Yeah, you wouldn't be following me. <laughs> <laughs> it's really simple. And I know I've said that a lot, too. But it is really simple. I know it's not easy, but you have to really consider. Say, say you're a person of uh, 40 years old. That means you've had 40 years of conditioning to the ongoing drama. 40 years of conditioning. Now, you're not going to turn that around overnight, are you? (laughs) Well, there you are. You have to be patient with yourself. And that was the hardest thing I ever had to do was actually be patient enough with myself to receive my own message. And that's what I'm sharing with you, what I received. But in my receiving, I understood it is for everyone will receive as you think you are. And if you think differently, you receive differently. And that's as simple as that, isn't it? It is. And sometimes we call that uh, moving from one state to the other. But whatever you call that shift, that change, once you make it, your world will begin to change. Now, don't be like those who are immature. And the second that they change that thought, they're looking for the immediate manifestation of that change. Even though it's happening immediately, physical reality sometimes has to catch up with what's going on with the on the within. Would you agree? That's right. You have to stay with it. That's the whole thing right there. It stops when you stop, doesn't it? Absolutely, and I'm glad that you said that because it's like the young man that was asking me to see health and healing on his behalf, and I began doing that. He said he started feeling better, and at the first sign of an ailment, and he went back to what was familiar, and it reminded me of Peter. He asked, Lord, bid me to come out on the water. Jesus said, come, and Peter was walking on water, and he started looking at the currents and the raging of the water around him, and he started to sink. And that's so many of us. We say, Lord, beg me, you know, bid me to come out to you. And the coming out is the new ideal, the new concept, the healing, the prosperity, whatever it is that we're asking to be manifested in our world. But the second that the slightest disruption happens, we go back to the old mindset. Would you agree? As long as you doubt yourself, you're on the doubt side of everything, wouldn't you say? Absolutely, I agree. So there you are. When you doubt it, it stops. That's the stop sign. And you have to stop because you're not feeding. You know, if you think about it, what you're paying attention to, you're feeding. 
So if, if it's not a good idea, you're feeding a bad idea. I mean, why would you feed a bad idea? Why wouldn't you just drop it? See, people act like they own the ideas that they're thinking, but you don't. They're, they're just images of, of, of actually your own mind because that's what you've been thinking, so that's what comes up. But you want to change what comes up, so you change your thinking. It, it all comes down to as you think you are. But if you actually sat in a stillness and really thought about what I just said, as you think you are, and really, really analyze what you've been thinking all along and see how you're experiencing from this moment forward. Look, God did not give you the spirit of fear. God did not give you the spirit of, of sickness. He, he didn't do that. But you have created it yourself. Because remember, as you think you are. So if you're ill, hurt, sick, then you agreed with something someone said or you thought it yourself. You doubted that you could be cured, that you could be healed. You doubted. And that's the only reason you're not healed today, because you doubted, as you think you are. Is it? Very it takes, powerful. It sounds clear to me, but, you know, I don't know how it sounds to someone else. I can remember when I first heard it, when I first heard Neville Goddard and started buying his books and tapes and everything else and listening to him, the only thing that really stopped me time and time again was I was doubting myself. I always considered the things I did wrong, but I never gave myself credit for the things I did right. And so I always had a heavy side on the negative. And that stalled me time and time again. But you can do away with it because you can change your mind, your world. Wouldn't you say? Absolutely. And for years, like Mr. Lindo, I fought for my own limitations. You know, <laughs> I said, that can't be so. It, you know, it can't. You know, it just can't be that easy. And as long as I fought for my own limitations, that's what was manifested in my world. And I'd like to suggest that doubt, disbelief, is that unpardonable sin, that God cannot act contrary. If you're operating from doubt and disbelief, God says he will not have anything to do with that person. It's not that he doesn't want to. He can't. He can't. Faith and doubt can't coexist. You can't operate and say, I believe this, but I'm doubting this. The second you incorporate doubt into the equation, you've undone what it is that you say that you believe. Would you agree? That's it. There's only God, and he gave you choose, and you have chosen, and you're experiencing what you have chosen. And if you say you didn't choose it, then that means you think God made a mistake. That wouldn't be wise, would it? <laughs> it definitely wouldn't be wise, and the only thing that that, in essence, really does for the individual, because God is within them, is keep them stuck. That's in that it. current situation that they're blaming God for. That's it. That's it. How can you blame God and then believe him? I mean, come on. I know. I did. I really had my doubts about his powers and all of that. But, wow. Once you pass through the portal, once you pass through and declare, thou shalt decree a thing, and it shall be so. Not maybe. It shall be so. What are you decreeing? What are you saying? Oh, they're always like that. Oh, that always happens. Oh, this is likely to be the worst ever. See, you say things like that to yourself and think that it just went off in the air, but it didn't. It's being processed in your future experiencing. Nothing is falling into the past. Every word must be accounted for now. And it is now. It's accounted for. So if you're suffering now, you're suffering what you're thinking. Thinking makes it so. <laughs> That's it, isn't it? It is so. And I want to uh, end it by saying 
then you say, see, I told you so, that always happens to me. That's it. That's it. Yeah, and then they wonder why it does. Absolutely. Absolutely. So as we're winding down, I want to make mention again of uh, Mr. Lindo's four CD sets. Again, this CD set is meditative. What we want to do is get these truths in your spirit. What you get with the four CD set is unbroken interruption of eight different talks combined into four-hour CDs. And these talks, their goal is to speak to you at your spirit level. These are not entertainment. These are not uh, lessons that tell you A, B, C. These things you let play in the background. And as you're listening to them in your quiet time, in your meditation, as you're in the silence, there's going to be some things that agree with your spirit, and it's going to begin the transformation process. If you're interested in those CDs, you can get the physical CDs if you're here in the U.S. If you're outside the U.S., you can get the digital downloads. Go to Metaphysical Art theater.com again metaphysicalarttheater.com and you can get those CDs as we're winding down what would you say to the listener about fear not I'm with you it says theater not church you are the church you are the temple of the living God now this is so if that doesn't answer all your questions then nothing will. There's only God. And he doesn't make duds. You made a dud if you feel like a dud because it's given choice. You've chosen. What have you chosen? Just sit down and think of what. What have you chosen? Because you're experiencing it. Wouldn't you say Absolutely, and I want to give a little bit of trivia before we close. I looked up in the Bible how many times it said, fear not or do not fear, depending upon what version of the Bible you're looking at. And I found that it said, fear not, 365 times. God has given us a fear not for every day of the year. That's it. That's great. That's great. I hadn't even thought of that. One for every day, because it's always this day. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, I'll tell you, he has his tricky moments. <laughs> and, you know, the funny thing about those tricks, they're spread throughout Scripture. There's these things, these nuggets that many times we live and die, and we're never aware. And that one kind of floored me, that there were 365 fear not. I didn't know that. Of course, I, I probably haven't studied it like you have. <laughs> and and also, you know, people tell me, all, what chapter and verse is that? I don't know. I mean, you know, chapter and verse, I, I know that that's important to the Bible scholars to, to be able to check everything back and forth. I mean, I got one Bible here that has four Bibles in it, and they're all the, the same, but the difference. And 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 they say things a little different in one than in the other. But if you go by the King James, they're much much more suggestive than they are actual words that are said, and that really causes a lot of confusion about Scripture. But it isn't secular history; it is divine history. Isn't that what you found? Absolutely. It's definitely divine history. So, it's always up to the individual. You know, I will do this, I will not do this. And, 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 and we have no say over that. We give you the information, and that, as it was given to us. And we're sharing it with you. And if you use it or don't use it, that's totally up to you. I don't know you, you don't know me. That's okay. You don't need to. And you don't need to actually come again and again to hear it if you're doing it. But if you're not doing it, you better listen often, wouldn't you say? Absolutely. Absolutely. Sir, it's been a pleasure. Oh, it always is. It always is a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Talk to you later. Talk to you later.